Venom! Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and this is another one that's donated to us by Cam Frazier because Cam was nice enough to donate all these digital codes to me so I could read all these comics and catch up on King and Black. And I'm sorry it's been so long since I've done an episode. You know, I've been in a real funk lately, uh, to be honest with you, personally. Um, everything that's coming up with the health stuff and, uh, you know, everyone just saying, rest, dude, you got to take care of yourself, rest, rest, rest. I put everything off for a while. I wasn't doing, uh, really working on Neverland that much, which is sucks because I kind of promised everyone they would start getting stuff uh, next month. Um, and so, and I'm still going to try to hold to that, but I just, you know, I was taking care of myself and I'll be honest with you, I hated it. I hated it. I was miserable the whole time. Um, I was sleeping a lot, uh, which is, you know, what they say my body needed. And when I gave into it, of course, I, you know, continued to rest because it felt good to rest. And uh, to be honest with you, it, it made me miserable and uh, I don't care if it kills me. I like working on stuff. I like making content. I like making videos and I'm just, I guess I just hit my breaking point uh, earlier today and I said, you know what? I've been meaning to make this video for a while. I've been meaning to make a Resident Evil video. So luckily some news came up for that and that kind of got me off my butt. And now here we are to talk about more King and Black stuff so we can wrap this up and we can get to the Space Knight stuff so we can wrap that up. And then hopefully this summer we can spend all summer just enjoying new Carnage comics that are coming out like Extreme Carnage and then talking about um, Peter Parker in the times he was uh, in the black costume. So, um, so yeah, so I wanted to just, you know, address that and say, hey, thanks for being so patient and everything. And yes, I have some health issues and you know what? I will deal with them as they pop up. If I have any mistakes on things, I will just edit them out. Uh, you know, if I have any, if I space out or anything, so I'm going to cut down on live streams. I'm going to get rid of my StreamYard account and all that stuff. And I'm going to go back to making videos the way I used to make them so that I have a little bit more control over what's going on and what I'm sharing with you guys. So that way, if I do have a moment, cause I had a, I had a small spell on a live stream recently and I just don't want to do that again. So, uh, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back to basics and I hope you guys, uh, you know, enjoy that. And then I also have some new styles of videos that I'll be making coming up. Not really new to this channel. I've done them before, but just not in excess. You will get more of those coming up and you'll see what I mean pretty soon, actually. Um, all right. So let's start off. Let's we're today. We're going to go over Miles Morales, Spider-Man issue 23. We're going to go over King and Black, uh, Planet of the Symbiotes 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to go over uh, King and Black Scream number 1. So those are the books we're going to talk about today. So the first one we have is by uh, Salad and Ahmed and Carmen uh, Carnero, which is Miles Morales, Spider-Man, number 23. And this book, you know, it was okay. You know, I'm, I've got to be honest with you. I'm not like, I'm, I'm, I wasn't blown away by a lot of these. Like we're now we're getting down to the stuff that I, you know, I'm reading now and I, I was kind of saving. There's a couple issues in this book that I'm going to, you know, praise a little bit. But then there's going to be some that are just kind of mad. And that's how we've been mostly on these tie-ins. I feel like a lot of times, you know, they're not worth it really as tie-in issues. But I feel like what I noticed here is Sal and Ahmed did a really good job, I thought, on Absolute Carnage Miles Morales. I actually liked those three issues, and I thought they really set up Miles. Like, I think issue two was kind of mad to me, but one and three were pretty solid. And what it set up was Miles gaining control of his Carnage symbiote and taking ownership of it and steering it and using the powers the way he wants to use them and i really like that and then donnie did nothing with that in the main book and so this time i feel like saladin was like you know what i'm just gonna do one issue hang off on the side over here and just show miles you know fighting a dragon and using his electric powers which is great because that's you know miles can weaken null and the symbiotes with his powers that's what's really cool about miles so to me, I would have wanted Miles to have a bigger part in the main story, but I would have liked everyone to have a bigger part in the main story. In the main five issues that Donny Cates wrote, he gives like a scene in one issue to Spider-Man and then a scene in another issue to like kind of the X-Men a little bit or Namor and then a kind of a Blade moment. And you're just kind of like, focus, dude, focus, like, like figure this out. And the editor, like uh, Devin Lewis and the team, like figure this out, make this make sense, make it a good story. And, uh, Honestly, King in Black is just like a lot of other Marvel events, in my opinion. It's awful. Um, it, it is. It, it, it's, it's, everyone on that book has, uh, is skilled and talented. And except Ryan Stegman, no one else brought their skill or talent to that book, in my opinion. I think Ryan Stegman drew his heart out for what he had, but even some pages weren't, I felt, the standard of Ryan Stegman either. Um, maybe I set them with high standards and high bars. Maybe that's a little unfair. But I just know the potential of these people, and I've seen them knock it out of the park numerous times before. 
King in Black was a massive letdown. So I'm glad that these tie-ins are at least decent books. I, they don't need to be great tie-ins now anymore. I don't even care about them tying into King in Black because I thought the book wasn't good. So them just being okay is a win for me. So this book where you have, uh, you know, Miles like saving a dragon and like, you know, blowing the symbiote off of it or whatever. And he's like taking it around and ends up getting in a fight with uh, his friend, Miss Marvel, who is symbiote uh, possessed. And then he uses his powers to like free her from the symbiote possession with his electric powers. But it takes it takes too much out of him. It's kind of like the um, a little bit like the ending of the Spider-Man video game, Miles Morales video game where he has to charge up his powers and absorb all that electricity. I don't want to spoil it past that. But in this, um, he does absorb, or he, he generates a lot of electricity and uses it on Miss Marvel, not enough to kill her, but enough to destroy the symbiote that's covering her. And then the book pretty much ends with her holding him in her arms, um, you know, like Miles wake up. And then I thought 24 would pick up from there. And, and you know, even if it wasn't tied to King in Black, I still wanted to see what happened from, the mo from that moment. But they don't, they kind of, brush over it and move on to the next story. So to me, it was clear Solid Ahmed was just like, I ain't doing anything that's gonna, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. He probably wanted to do more, I have no idea. But uh, but all I'm saying is Absolute Carnage, in my opinion, his miniseries was a good one, but it didn't, but Donny Cates didn't even like pay attention to it. And here, I think he was just like, well, if, I, if I'm not gonna be paid attention to, then I'm gonna do just like, you know, like everyone else. I'm going to have Miles fight a dragon. And that's pretty much what that book was. Um, but that's okay. Because I, I still felt like it was decent. And I am liking the Miles Morales book. I do read it monthly. And uh, I actually enjoyed the run. I think Solomon Ackman is a, is a decent writer. And he's doing a good job on Miles. I don't love everything on it. But just because I don't love everything doesn't mean I don't see the potential there. And some of his strengths that do shine. Um, and I think some of the art teams he's had on the book are, are interesting. And I'm curious to see how the Clone Saga fares. If it's not great, I, that might be my jumping off point. But I am at least a little intrigued to see what a Miles Morales clone story would be. Even though I think it's repetitive you know regurgitated bullcrap like marvel loves to do where they just rename things old name the names of old books like heroes reborn coming up and she hulk uh world war she hulk and it's like enough come up with something new so depending on how well um clone saga is written for miles is going to decide if i stay on that book or not um all right so let's jump over to plan of the symbiotes we have uh, issues one two and three um, the first one is pretty neat. It, it actually deals with Scream, so that's why I want to talk about this first before we get to Scream number one. But it also deals with the Life Foundation symbiotes, which is great. Uh, you know, it's so cool to see those characters again. So we have uh, Clay McLeod Chapman, who wrote Scream, is back uh, writing here. And uh, I forget, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your first name, Villanova, but G. Villanova. I think that's what we referred to uh g before so i'm sorry i don't want to butcher your first name um but your art is phenomenal in this i really did like the story where you brought the life foundation symbiotes back and they're nullified obviously they got the spirals and they're looking for a kid i think they're looking for um dylan so they just come across like a random little kid uh his mom and dad are dead in the front seat uh so pretty dark pretty in keeping with uh, uh chapman's like other uh life foundation story where they like took over the family and now you have uh, the four Life Foundation symbiotes, uh, Lasher, Riot, Agony, and Phage, all descending on this one kid, and then Scream showing up to fight. Um, and Scream using like a Scream ability to like hurt them. Uh, but then the, the, they become, uh, the Life Foundation symbiotes get hurt, and they decide to form in together like a hybrid, like they, you know, like they were at one point. Uh, but they're like a nullified hybrid, and they don't have Scream as part of them until they try to absorb her. And then they, that doesn't go too well. And she uses her powers to fight back. And so like Andy is using the hell mark now and uh, other abilities to fight back against uh, the Life Foundation symbiote. So I, again, this is just a quick summary, but a lot of these stories are really short and I wanna keep this video as short as I can, uh, but uh, but it is, it is neat stuff. So uh, definitely pick up issue one. If you want to read more Scream stuff by the creative team from the Scream book, uh, definitely pick up number one. Uh, and then we also have a Ravencroft book, which we still got to go back and do Ravencroft one through five miniseries. Because um, I think that's, I think we did the three prequels, but I don't think we've done the main series yet. Uh, but this is written by Frank Thierry and uh, Danilo S. Bayruth is the artist, who I think we've mentioned before on the show. And this is another um, Raven, a story set in Ravencroft, but this time dealing with uh, Cletus Cassidy's ancestor. So we talked about uh, that character in the um, the one of the, the the prequels to the Ravencroft miniseries, one of the one shots, and uh, and so this time you get to see uh, 
that Cassidy, the original Cassidy, uh, and I'm blanking on his name right now, but you get to see him come back. Uh, his body is buried at the bottom of Ravencroft. I don't know how he still even is more than bones, but there's there looks like there's some hair and some flesh on him, I guess. Uh, and Null is like, this is one of the first, you know, humans to ever listen to my voice. And I turned him into a monster or whatever. So uh, we're going to resurrect him and make him a, a character named Plague. So now we got this new character Plague, and he's fighting um, uh, Misty Knight and also Manwolf, you know, who obviously work at Ravencroft, or Manwolf does. Um, so yeah, so you get a, another short story there with those characters. So just cool to, again, see these characters during this big event. And uh, and that actually seeing like a new villain pop up, Plague, I'm like, okay, that's neat. Um, That, even though it doesn't feel like it ties, I mean, it kind of ties directly in because Null shows up to resurrect the body, but at least it's not another freaking dragon. The book starts off, that issue starts off with a dragon, uh, but then it kind of, uh, the dragon stuff falls to the wayside. So at least for this whole issue, you get very little dragon stuff in it, which I was very happy about. Um, so now we have issue two here. And this one was interesting because I love the second half of the book, but I wasn't a big fan of the first half, which is crazy considering the, the creative team behind it. Because we had Mark Bernardin, um, who was the writer of it. So if you've never checked out Kevin Smith podcast, he's like Kevin Smith's co-host and friend on that show. Uh, the two of them host that show together. And Kyle Hotz, who's an amazing artist, and they did a story called American Kaiju, and that's like kind of the start of this book. And it's pretty much just a monster book. It's like this person with a corporate, uh, Corporal uh, Todd Ziller, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> like has, turns into a giant kaiju monster, and he fights these dragons, these null dragons, and he's like eating them and biting into them and ripping them apart. And he keeps saying USA, because he's like, a soldier it's it's so cliche a lot of it it's like i swear sometimes people who i feel like if they they don't really know a, like about a soldier life and everything they just go okay well they're a soldier then they must be some kind of all-american everything this or that and it's like well how about a little diversity mentally in that like you know not maybe not every soldier is just spouting usa you know like give them a little bit more personality than that um, but I guess he's a monster, so he doesn't have much of a personality. But as he's transforming at the end back to a human, he says USA again. You're just like, whatever. <laughs> so I wasn't really a big fan of this story. I didn't like it too much. But the Kyle Hotz artwork is great because there's a lot of body horror stuff in it, um, especially with the transformation scene at the end. And you find out that this guy works for the government and they're going to send him out to fight future monsters or whatever. Who cares? Because the last half of this book is great. <laughs> uh, it is uh, by Jeffrey Thorne uh, and also Jan Bas, uh, Bas, Basaldua, Basalda. Uh, and I'm sorry, Jan, if I'm butchering your last name. Uh, your art, though, is phenomenal, Jan. Uh, Jan, uh, you are awesome. I'm so glad you're drawing Hobie Brown and doing a Prowler costume and the new Hornet costume. Uh, this is something we talked to Jeffrey Thorne a couple, like I think over a month and a half ago. He came on the show and he talked to us about his Black Panther one shot that he did for King and Black. Also this book here, the, uh, the, the Hornet one, and then his Green Lantern run that's uh, out now. So make sure you go pick that stuff out and support Jeffrey's stuff. His stuff is awesome. And, uh, and oh, but to be honest, I, I was kind of, I'm 50-50 on his Green Lantern. I'm interested to see where it goes. But the first issue didn't hook me fully but I'm willing to see where it goes because this hooked me hook, line, and sinker. Uh, this whole story here with Hobie talking to his wife and telling her I'm not the clone. The clone is dead. You know, he's trying. they're trying to clear up and retcon that whole dumb thing that uh, Dan Slott did, which I hated so much. Um, and then now it's basically like um, The Mist where it's a bunch of people stuck in like a, a single location. Or in this case, it's a restaurant, not a grocery store. And Hobie and his wife are just trying to have dinner. He's trying to come clean and tell her I'm not going to be Prowler anymore. And then the monster starts showing up and the dragon starts showing up. And of course, then there's tension between some of the other people in the in the restaurant because Hobie wants to board up the windows and keep everyone safe. And another guy's like, who made you in charge? And it's done too quickly. Like normally you would you would stretch that out a little bit with tension between people. But he had like eight pages or ten pages to tell the story. So I get it. It's, it's kind of contracted. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to overlook it a little bit there. Uh, but then you have Hobie fighting. In a Prowler colored costume, it's purple and black, but he's got the Hornet logo on his chest. And he's like, look, I told you I wouldn't be Prowler anymore, but there already is another Prowler. Someone took that identity. So now it's time to make a different name for myself. And uh, Hobie made the Prowler costume for Peter Parker back in the 90s when they did the Identity Crisis story. And Peter was, uh, or Spider-Man was wanted for murder, and he came up with four alternate superhero identities 
to like fight crime with until his until he could clear the name of Spider-Man and prove that Spider-Man was not a murderer. So one of those identities was the Hornet, which Hobie Brown designed the costume for. And then eventually that costume fell in the hands of a kid with cerebral palsy and the rest of the team formed the Slingers. And so all, the, all those four costumes that Spider-Man got rid of, they were duplicated uh, by, uh, by the Blue Marvel, I think. And then he gave those costumes to um, these kids who became the the slingers which is a book i really love <laughs> so so all this is great i mean this is like a, a story written just for me by jeff who is a friend of mine and also uh thinks just like me when it comes to this kind of stuff so i just was like that's awesome it's like this is exactly what i would have written in this case so it was just cool to see a story that was would be something like i would come up with on a, in a comic book i'm like wow i probably would come up with something very similar so I really like this. And so the book ends with Hornet going back to his place, getting his wings and flying off into the city looking for Spider-Man so he could help out. Unfortunately, we never see what happens after that in King and Black because, uh, you know, Donny Cates just doesn't care about any of these tie-ins, so it doesn't matter. But uh, hopefully there's a, a Hornet series comes out at some point and we get to see, you know, what, you know, what battles Hobie got in during King and Black before leading into whatever his new book is. And honestly, if, if they do do a book with him, I hope they bring Big Wheel in because I would love to see Hornet fight Big Wheel now. That'd be great. All right, so next up we have Planet of the Symbiotes number three. And uh, the first half of this book stars Cloak and Dagger, who are really cool characters. But this story was just kind of man to me. It was by Rodney Barnes is the writer of it. And Danio uh, Bayruth, who comes back as the artist. So that's really cool that uh, we get more of their art, uh, which is good. I mean, nothing against this story. I like these characters. But there just wasn't a ton to it. I mean, you had Cloak, and it looked like he was kind of tapped into the darkness a little bit. You get a little bit of his backstory. You know, I guess it's for people who are kind of new to them and how his powers work and stuff like that. Same with Dagger. Uh, but then it gets to a point where it seems like he is infected by this darkness, and so Dagger has to kind of free him from it. So by holding and embracing each other, um, you know, this white light comes out and kind of saves them and, and uh, gets the darkness away and also... Uh, you know, waves off some dragons at the same time. So, um, so it was okay. I'm sure it's probably setting up something that maybe this writer would like to do more of, but I, I wasn't, I was just kind of like, eh, it's fine. I was more interested in this second story because this just seemed more neat to me. Uh, it looked like a giant brood creature in the Lincoln tunnel. Um, this is a toxin story actually, uh, by Steve Orlando and, uh, Geraldo Sandoval, who was, uh, one of the artists, on um, the, the the Lee Price Spider-Man or Venom books that came out. Um, and then Victor Nava is the other artist on this one. And this is pretty neat because it starts off with this big creature and Toxin shows up to fight it and the two of them get into it and he's trying to talk it out with the brood creature, which is kind of neat. But then this jury member shows up and I'm like, hey, cool, look at that. We got a kind of a jury guy here uh, or like a, a guardsman or whatever they were called. And then you have Toxin fighting and they're going back and forth. And it's funny because Toxin's dialogue just comes across like not he's not very a sophisticated guy uh, or, or person in this. And I'm kind of like, whoa, what's up with this dialogue? What's going on? And then they reveal it at the end, which is really great. So spoilers, if you don't want spoilers for this uh I recommend picking up uh, this issue. Actually, this was a lot of fun. This is the start of a new Toxin character, and I think we're going to see that character upcoming in Extreme Carnage in that miniseries. So, uh, so here we have Toxin like swinging home at the end, going back to Staten Island, and you find out it's a little kid, uh, and the and the the symbiote is talking to it. And I'm like, this is great because it's literally talking to him like uh, Venom does in the movie with with uh, you know uh, Tom Hardy and stuff, where it's like a little thing on his shoulder and it's like leaning over and talking to him. I'm like, that's fantastic. I love that. Um, and so uh, so it ends with, uh, you know, his dad going like, you know, son, I'm home. And he's like, yeah, dad, give me a minute. And he's like, all right, symbiote, like hide. Pretend like you're my clothes or whatever. And, they're, you know, he's trying to hide the suit from his dad. And then he's like, uh, dad, I'll be out in a minute. And his dad's like, that's okay, son, take your time. And it cuts to outside of his the kid's bedroom. And his dad is the jury member slash guardsman that was fighting him earlier when he was Toxin. And he's like, don't worry, son, I'm going to need a minute too. He's like, I'll be, I'll, I'll meet you downstairs for dinner. And he's in the suit and you're like, oh my goodness. So it's like, I oh, thought that was a cool twist um, where the dad is the guardsman, you know, hunter that's going to be looking for the, uh, the son who he doesn't know it's his son who is now Toxin, the new Toxin. Um, so I kind of like that because the thing with Toxin has always been about family. Like he's the son and, you know, obviously of, of Venom and stuff like that or Carnage, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, and so he's kind of comes from a bad father. Uh, but then also um, 
there's, you know, he bonded to um, Milligan or Mulligan or whatever, the cop, and, the, and he was married to a woman and they just had a kid. So there was that theme of family there. So I kind of like that they, Steve Orlando brought that to this, this new version. Um, I really dug that. So yeah, I actually really liked this uh, backup story a lot. And I'm really curious to see where they go from here. So it was a good job by uh, Steve Orlando and his team on those pages. So, um, so yeah, if you haven't read that yet, please go check that out as well. And, and now our last book, which is going to be Scream Number 1 uh, by Clay McLeod Chapman again and Gary Brown on the art. And this looks like it's reusing some of the pages that we saw them tweet about back when the book got canceled, uh, especially this first image here with um, the, the new Demogoblin, like, you know, lashing out and everything. Um, this Demogoblin creature was, uh, you know, I think this image was one of the images they tweet out. Because remember, they drew like five or six pages of like an issue seven or whatever the next issue was i think it was seven they had already drawn like five or six pages of it in pencil and they were working on the rest i think some of those pages got reused here because this is very much like the, this reminded me a lot of ghost rider king in black where uh they had to like wrap up that run and make it tie into king in black that's totally what happens here uh, so it looks like Clay McLeod Chapman got some of the King Black stuff and the, the Life Foundation, you know, symbiotes. They got that out of the way. So now he could just come in and focus on Shriek and her new Demogoblin personality. Um, so that's pretty much what the bulk of the story is with art by Gary Brown. And again, Gary was, I think, the artist on those issues that when the book was canceled. So it seems like they were they're able to find a way to kind of pick up where that story left off, tie in a little bit to King in Black, and then also wrap up that Demogoblin story, kind of. Because um, it looks like we might get some more Scream stuff coming up with Extreme Carnage, so maybe there'll still be room in there for, for uh, Chapman to wrap up a few more threads. Um, so yeah, so last we saw it was, uh, you know, uh, Demogoblin was like uh, in a church and had lured all these kids to the church. It was really a mom, and, like it was like a creepy couple, like an older elderly couple, and they were luring children in. And then Demogoblin, I guess they found out they were working for Demogoblin and she killed the two elderly people. And it was just her looking over the kids now. So that's where the book starts off. Scream is like trying to help the kids, but they're kind of, you know, uh, they're kind of mind possessed a little bit by Null uh, and Demogoblin and everything. Um, and then Scream is pretty much in this big battle with Demogoblin. And so that's pretty, that's kind of the stakes there. It's like she's trying to save the kids and fight Scream or Shriek as Demogoblin. But it's cool because they have like a screaming match at one point and that uh, Shriek uses her powers and it starts eating away at uh, Andy's symbiote. But then obviously Andy has other abilities too, like the Hellmark and, and, uh, and gains control over symbiote again. And they fight back. Um, but there's actually a rare appearance by Null. It's not actually Null, I think. I think it's like another avatar. But Null does show up and he shows interest in Scream. And he's like, oh, you're the child that doesn't listen. Because obviously you remember the first few issues of Scream where she was fighting back against Grendel's mother. Null, I think, tried to reach out to her and, it, and she broke the connection. So he's kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to dismiss you. So he grabs her. They're on a roof. He throws her off the roof, much like he did Eddie Brock. But he didn't rip her suit off beforehand. So he throws her off in the, the suit and Andy land on a car. Andy's okay, but her helm mark then kicks in. And as Null is like, uh, you know, riding a dragon to come down to attack her, she uses the helm mark and the symbiote to fight back. And she actually stands up against Null. Uh, but again, this isn't actually Null. It's an avatar of Null. But at least, you know, he is there and you see Andy kind of beat that avatar. Um, and then but then he gets away so he kind of gets away and he's like i'll come back and fight you another day or whatever i don't know it's it was one of those things where it's like okay i get it you want to you got to tie up these loose ends you gotta you gotta find a way to bring closure to some of this stuff but to me i was just kind of mad on it to be honest with you i was just like i was like ah whatever but i don't fault him because again it, like i said this reminds me a lot of king and black ghost rider which was just had that feeling where i got a little frustrated where i'm like okay you're just trying to wrap up your run and button up some things i totally get it so uh so that's what we have here so and at the end you have andy with the scream suit powered up the the hell mark on her chest as scream not even just on andy's chest but you know burning through scream's chest as well and uh and then them ready to you know take on the day and, and fight so um we didn't get any more from scream in the king and black main series so this was kind of our moment and i feel like you know clay chapman was probably like oh well so she's not going to do much in the main book so i probably should have her at least meet some version of null here and wrap up the demogoblin story so the demogoblin does get beat 
and then then this version of Noel kind of gets chased away. Um, I don't know why, because he, it's just him on a dragon fighting her. I'm like, why didn't he just summon more dragons or celestials? Like, Noel is literally the dumbest villain uh, in the world. He has no strategy and no plan at all. He just bases everything on the fact that he has power, and he's like, I'm power. You should be afraid of me because I'm power, and it's like, but if you don't know how to use it, then you're useless, and that's why you got your ass beat so easily. <laughs> so, um, so to me, I'm just like, eh, whatever. So anyway, that's how this book ended, and uh, I, I liked it overall. Like um, these five issues, I do, they're like all middle ground stuff, except the Hornet story I really liked, the Toxin story I really liked, um, and uh, and the Miles thing was okay, and the Scream thing was okay. Actually, I like the Scream stuff more than Miles, um, but I think again, I think Solid and Ahmed was trying to like hold back on how much. He was going to have Miles involved because maybe of last time, but that's just me projecting that on. I could be totally wrong. Um, and then here with McLeod, I felt like he wanted to do too much to wrap up his stuff. And again, that's I felt like what happened with uh, the Ghost Rider thing, so I'm not going to fault him too much for that. So uh, overall, you know, pretty good stuff. But Cam, thank you for donating these to me. I did have fun reading them overall. I'm really excited about this new Toxin. I, that's a character I never really cared about before. But this new version where he's a kid and his dad is the one who's going to be hunting him, that's neat to me because uh, that feels a little bit like runaways like where they have evil parents um but it also reminds me a little bit of where they come from like i said uh uh you know uh, carnage his offspring was toxin so toxin's dad is like the worst of the worst right so having his, this kid's dad be a guardsman is pretty cool uh so i'm, I'm curious to see where that goes uh, but those are my thoughts as always i want to hear yours so let me know down in the comment section down below and we'll continue our conversation as always down there. So we made it through a video and I'll try to get more to you guys very, very soon. Thanks so much for being patient with me and, uh, and I'll get stuff out to you as fast as I can. Thanks so much. See you all in the future. Peace.